Well, it is that, uh, that second reading, that curious little reading uh, about Jacob and his dream and the ladder or the staircase uh, that we're going to be looking at. That's printed there if you would like to uh, have your eyes on it. Uh, I am just going to refer to it uh, from time to time. Uh, you know when you're on a bus or on, your, on a train or something like that um, and the person next to you... Uh, their book, their magazine, is always more interesting than yours, isn't it? Uh, that happened to me recently. I was, uh, I was on a train, I was going somewhere. Uh, and the person next to me was reading a book about Shackleton. And if you remember Shackleton, he was the uh, beginning of the last century, 19-something or other. He was that uh, explorer uh, that explored or went to uh, the Antarctic. Uh, and it reminded me, uh, reading this book, and I went and Googled it, and of course everything you get on Google must be right, uh, I, I Googled um, Shackleton because uh, he was said uh, to have put that advertisement in the London Times in 1913. Uh, men wanted for hazardous journey, low wages, bitter cold, long hours of complete darkness... Safe return, doubtful. <laughs> Honour and recognition in event of success. And apparently, in speaking of it afterwards, he said that so overwhelming was the response to his appeal that it seemed to him that all the men of Great Britain were determined to accompany him on his voyage to the Antarctic. I want to do something that uh, I hope you think is extraordinary, because it is extraordinary. Uh, I want to place a similar advertisement before you this morning. Give up everything. Surrender everything and make Jesus the ruler, the centre, the core of your life. Make everything else, make everyone else secondary to that. Now, why would you do that? Why would I invite you to do that? Well, that Bible reading, both of them, I think, but the one in, in Genesis particularly, uh, explains to us, I think, not only why we might do that, but why we would be, and this is my language, why, would we, why we would be plain bonkers not to do that. Uh, I've entitled this morning, God Shows Up, Jacob Bows Down. Uh, last week, Sarah, my wife and I, we were thinking about going to the cinema. Uh, we didn't actually go there, uh, but we did, we did get as far as uh, discussing what we might go and see. And we watched a couple of trailers online. It's great now, isn't it? You can watch trailers online. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this trailer. Actually, it's been advertised um, on, on, uh, on the TV. Uh, the trailer about A.A. A. A. Milne, the film about A.A. Milne, Goodbye Christopher Robin. It's quite a cutesy sort of film. Uh, Sarah quite fancied going to see that film. Uh, I mentioned a film called Atomic Blonde. Uh, Sarah immediately raised her eyebrows and her exact words were, what sort of film is that? Uh, and I conceded that it was probably a, a, a boy's film. Uh, but then I very quickly explained that it wasn't quite as dodgy and suspect as the title suspected. And, and yes, there was a girl in it who was in her early 20s. And I suppose you could describe her as mildly attractive and blonde. And, um, but anyway, she, she, she is, a, she is a, a professional assassin. And she makes James Bond and Jason Bourne look like Winnie the Pooh. Anyhow, we watch the trailers and perhaps inevitably we decided that Goodbye Christopher Robin was the film that we ought to, ought to, ought to go and see. There we go. But trailers are great, aren't they? Uh, trailers are great because they give you a glimpse, they give you a flavour of what is to come, what, it, what, 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 what to expect. Uh, and that is what God has done in history. Uh, the event, uh, the full feature film, if you like, lasted for 33 years, 2,000 years ago, 
God himself became a man. Uh, I am, once and for all, going to prove to people, says God, that I exist. I'm going to show people what I'm like, what my character is like. Uh, I'm going to teach people why I made them and what my good eternal purposes are for them. And I'm going to do everything necessary for them to be part of those eternal purposes. Uh, And in those 33 years, we see the birth, the life, the death, the rising again from death of, of God who became a man who called himself Jesus. Now, now, now that, is, that is the feature film. 2,000 years ago, God showed up in the person of Jesus. But prior to that, so 2,000 plus years ago, he did things in history which might properly be called trailers. Uh, Real events in history that give us a glimpse of what was to come. And that's what we've got this morning in this curious little story of Jacob. Uh, Historians and archaeologists argue about the date of this date, of, of this event, but somewhere around 2000 BC seems about right. And let me tell you about Jacob, the man in the story here. Uh, Jacob was a vile man. Uh, the word Jacob means grasper. I don't know how you name your kids, but calling your kid grasper, uh, I don't think they realise quite how, how apt that name was for him. A key man in the Bible was Abraham. Abraham had a son called Isaac, who had two twin sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau was out first. He was the eldest, presumably by seconds or minutes. Uh, In those days when dad died, when dad fell off his perch, uh, the older son would get the lion's share of dad's estate. Jacob was the younger son, but he had managed to dupe his father. He had managed to swindle his brother, and now he was in line. And so his brother was out to murder him, literally. Uh, All sorts of shenanigans. Uh, This is the sort of family that you would see on the Jeremy Kyle show. This is exactly the sort of family you would see on the Jeremy Kyle show. Uh, Jacob, he was the sort of guy that if you shook hands with him, you would count your fingers afterwards to make sure you hadn't stolen any. He was that sort of guy. Uh, The family home is in Beersheba. Uh, I went on to Google Maps. I found out that's about 60 miles south of Jerusalem. His brother is planning to kill him. So Jacob, what does he do? He does a runner to his mum's family home, which is 550 miles to the north. Again, I did Google Maps. Uh, Today it's in Turkey. So it's that sort of distance. God. Can you believe this? God himself shows up to Jacob. Not as fully and as dramatically as he will 2,000 years later in the person of Jesus. No, 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 because this is a, this is a trailer, not the feature film. God, the, God, the creator of this, of this incredible universe makes himself known, shows up to this piece of low life. Let's look again what happened. Verse uh, 10, uh, Moses, our author, tells us, uh, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream uh, in which he saw a stairway resting on earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. 
And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Years ago when I was a student, uh, someone came up with the bright idea that we should have little lapel badges with the words, God is. Uh, And the idea was that when you were standing next to someone in the panini queue, but of course students in those days couldn't afford paninis, um, the the idea was that when you were standing together in the lunch queue with someone, uh, someone curious would say to you, God is... God is what? And that gave you an opportunity to tell them. Uh, This little incident here, God shows up and we see that God is, well, there's enough here to keep us going till lunchtime. God is, God is in charge of history. History is not random. History is not unplanned. History is not out of control. God is in charge of history. God is in charge of people. He is creating a promised land. Our lives are short, aren't they? Um, Some people's lives, to our minds, are tragically short. Other people's lives are longer, but actually, even if I live to a hundred... I guess that's going to feel a bit short when I'm 99. But there is a promised land. There is a promised heaven that will go on for millions and billions and trillions of years. And even after a trillion years, the party will not have begun to even warmed up. And God is working all things towards that God is in charge of cosmic history, God is in charge of world history, and God is in charge of even despicable Jacob's history. God is, God is unexpectedly merciful. Would you choose to have Jacob in your family? I said a few weeks ago, uh, if you had a daughter... And she brought Jacob home. He's not son-in-law material. I have a daughter. I wouldn't dare tell my daughter that, but I'd certainly be thinking that. God is, God is present. He makes himself known to Jacob. Yes, I know here it's a dream, but this is a trailer. And as God's people would later experience, this dream was nothing as compared to him being physically present in the person of Jesus. This is nothing compared to him supernaturally living inside every believer in the person of the Holy Spirit. That dream was nothing compared to his actual words becoming available to us in written form for all for us to hear what we call the Bible. God is not unknowable, God is not distant, God is not remote, God is not unconcerned. Uh, God is not without a purpose for his people. Uh, Verse 14, we're told, or he said to Jacob, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I've done what I promised you. Now for sure that reference to the land was specific to Jacob but it is a picture because because this is a trailer. It is a picture of the new heaven and the new earth. How do we respond to such a God? 
I have a bit of a role in the National Church. Uh, A few months ago, the Archbishop of Canterbury swept past me uh, with his entourage. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see him. I stammered out, uh, good afternoon. He looked at me slightly strangely, probably because it was eight o'clock in the morning. (laughs) I'm really hoping he didn't see my name badge. How do you respond when you encounter God? Well, here, God showed up. Jacob bowed down. Verse 16, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I'm not going to tell you whether it ever happened to me. I'm sure it didn't happen to you, but you can sort of imagine it happening to someone else. Uh, You're at school and it's break time and you're telling your friends exactly what you think of one of your teachers Uh, And then you realise that some of your friends are looking rather uncomfortable and that others of your friends are killing themselves with laughter. And of course you turn around and your teacher is standing there and has heard every word. (laughs) And how you want the ground just to swallow you up. Or worse. (laughs) Now, Now Jacob, Jacob doesn't see God face to face. He merely has a dream of God standing at the top of a staircase and yet he is both awed and he is afraid. And we can imagine the thoughts going through Jacob's mind. This God who has seen me manipulate and swindle and scheme and lie. He's seen my contempt for my dad and for my brother. He's seen the contempt, actually, I must have for him if I'm the sort of person that behaves like this in his world. The question the Bible poses again and again and again, uh, the question the Bible answers, first of all in the trailers and then in the feature film, how, how can I ever stand in the presence of such a holy God? Given what he's heard me say, given what he's watched me do, given what he's seen me think, given the person I am. Well, in this trailer, uh, God is at the top of the staircase, Jacob is down here. But what happens in the feature film? Well, he himself, in the person of Jesus, climbs down the stairs to a little town in Bethlehem. Uh, He lives the perfect life, the life I should live, the life I don't live. He dies the death I deserve to die. He takes the penalty of my rebellion against God onto himself. He makes me worthy to have a relationship with him and he promises to change me and to give me eternal life and further he promises to use me in his grand cosmic purposes of being an extraordinary blessing to people around him. Jacob, how did he respond to seeing God? God shows up, Jacob bows down. I do a weekly assembly uh, at our village school at the Priory. This term we're going through the Lord's Prayer. Uh, This is slightly unorthodox, I know. Uh, In going through the Lord's Prayer, I am extensively using the word wow with these children. So you can perhaps imagine how that might work. Uh, Our Father in heaven, wow. We have someone we can speak to in heaven, wow. Wow. Hallowed be your name. Whenever we think about your name, your character, we want to go, wow. And Jacob here, although the word isn't used, it's almost used with the word V, vow. But Jacob here, he goes, wow, doesn't he? Verse 20, then Jacob made a vow saying, 
If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey and I'm taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then wow. Then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Wow, if God will do this for me... Wow, if God has promised to provide for me and protect me and give me a purpose and include me in his purposes, wow, if God is going to do this for me, then I'm going to make him my God. In some way, I'm going to worship him, even my money, the thing that I was so grasping over, I'm even going to be giving that back over to him. God showed up. Jacob bowed down. Wow, Jacob was saying, if, if, God is, if God is in charge of history, if God is merciful, if God is present with his people, if God is knowable, if this holy God has made a way that deeply flawed me can know him, if God has promised to provide for me and protect me and give me a purpose and include me in his purposes, then would I not give up everything? Would I not surrender everything? Would I not make Jesus the ruler, the centre, the core of my life? Would I not make everything else, everything else secondary to him? Would I not be playing bonkers not to do that? Verse 20, Jacob's words, Jacob's words, which can be my words. These are Jacob's words. If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, everything I need, so that I return safely to my father's household then the Lord will be my God. Those were Jacob's words. Can you, can you conceive of them being your words? What would stop them being your words? 